Dear students, this video is about uh, IFRS 15, that is uh, revenue recognition. First of all, uh, we have to discuss that, uh, what is the meaning of revenue? So uh, the revenue term and the income term is uh, quite uh, confusing. So first of all, let me just clear that, uh, what is income and what is revenue? Income is the increase in economic benefits as a result of either increase in assets or decrease in liabilities. So revenue is also income, but revenue is that income that arises in the ordinary course of an entity's ordinary activities. So whatever is the income that is uh, uh, being generated by the normal course of business that will be classified as revenue and the other source of income would be considered similarly as other income and would be part of profit and loss account. Now, in order to uh, recognize revenue, it's very important that the timing of the recognition of revenues to be considered carefully. Otherwise, an entity can overstate revenue and as a result, profit can be overstated. So IFRS 15 suggested a five step model of the recognition of revenue. Let's see what are those steps. So in order to recognize revenue, whether it's against goods or other against services, the five step steps model says that first one is identify, identify the contract with the customer. Now, in most of the cases, this is uh, quite simple because when we are enter into a contract, both the buyer and seller knows the terms of the contract, the subject matter, the price and, and so and so on. So uh, whatever is the contract details, both the seller and the customer should be aware about that contract. After identification of the contract with the customer, what we have to identify is the performance obligation in the contract. Now, what is performance obligation? For example, if I'm providing you any goods, the provision of goods is the performance obligation. If I'm providing you services, that is called the performance obligation. That is what I am delivering to you against the benefit. The third step is that determine that what is the transaction price related to that performance obligation? How much is the transaction price? And what, what, what are the kind of transaction price? How you're getting that transaction price? Fourth step is allocate the transaction price to performance obligation. Now, in some cases, this is very simple and we don't need to have the step number four if there is only one performance obligation. But in most cases, there are multiple performance obligation in a single contract. So we have to allocate the transaction price. That is the step number two and three transaction price with each performance obligation. That is a bit difficult. If there are more than one performance obligation, then allocation is a difficult issue. And when we have done with the four steps, that is identification of contract, performance obligation, transaction price, and the allocation of transaction price, then we have to recognize revenue when entity satisfy performance obligation. That is what is your contract? What type of performance obligation you are providing? Is it in time or over a period of time? So we have to see the nature of goods and services and then we have to decide that when revenue is to be recognized. Now let's see each step in detail. So first of all, the identification of the contract. A contract is an agreement between two or more parties that creates enforceable rights and obligation. A contract can be agreed in writing. It might be an oral contract or through other customary business practices. An entity can only account for revenue if contract meets the following criteria. If any condition, any point is not satisfied, then we cannot recognize revenue. Number one, the parties to the contract have approved the contract and are committed to perform their respective obligation. 
so both the seller and the buyer would know the terms they have approved the contract and they are committed to perform their respective obligation the entity can identify each party's rights regarding the goods or services to be transferred the entity can identify the payment terms for the goods and services the contract has commercial substance and it is probable that the entity will collect the consideration to which it will be entitled in exchange for the goods and services that will be transferred to the customer for example uh, sometime it happens that you are not sure about the collection of the consideration so in that case you have to wait for the certainty or the probability of the consideration collection otherwise you cannot rec uh, uh, recognize a contract now let's assume that all the conditions have been satisfied and we have identified a contract with the customer now let's move to identify the separate performance obligation in the contract i've already told you that if it's a single performance obligation then still you need to know that what kind of benefit uh, the buyer will be uh, getting from the supplier what is performance obligation the performance obligations are promise to transfer distinct goods or services to a customer so it's a commitment it's a promise to provide something distinct performance obligation within a contract must be identified and that performance obligation will be a distinct goods and services it might be series of distinct goods and services that are substantially the same and that have same pattern of transfer sometime we know that the in case of goods uh, sometimes we get the goods immediately sometimes we pay in advance sometimes we pay later on and some in case of services we usually get services over a period of time so you have to identify that what is the performance obligation and how you can deliver that performance obligation in the third step determine the transaction price this is very important what is transaction price the transaction price is the amount of consideration to which an entity expect to be entitled for the exchange of promised goods and services to a customer is the amount of consideration now sometime it happens that you receive something from the customer but that consideration does not belongs to you for example amount collected on behalf of third parties such as sales tax are excluded because this is collected on behalf of the tax authority so what whatever you are collecting this must be related to you the consideration promised in a contract with a customer may include a fixed amount that would be very easy it might be a variable amount or it might be a fixed plus variable amount when determining the transaction price an entity shall consider a the effect of all of the following the variable consideration the existence of a significant financing component in the contract a non cash consideration and consideration payable to a customer we will discuss uh, subsequently in detail about the variable consideration issues about the uh, non cash consideration issue but let's discuss here that if there is any a uh, significant financing component included in the transaction then what we have to do so so for example if there is any significant financing component for example if you buy this particular goods right now the price is different and if you pay one in one year's time the price is different it means significantly it is significant financing component then what we have to do we have to discount the amount of consideration receivable we have to use the discount rate that is relevant with respect to buyer's risk and then we have to discount the value and on present value terms we have to recognize revenue for example the contract date is 31st december 2020 performance obligation is uh, we have to transfer equipment transfer of equipment took place 31st december 
2020 and uh, price in the contract is 1 million market rate of interest is 10% payment due on 31st december 2023 now at the 10% discount rate first of all we have to see that uh, the date of transaction is 31st december 2020 and the date of payment is 31st december 2023 so the payment that is to be made is uh, uh, 1 million here that means 2021 2022 2023 that means after 3 years so what we have to do we have to identify the present value now we have to identify the discount rate uh, the discount factor using the 10% rate uh, so the relevant discount factor for 3 years is 0.751 using the 10% rate now the pv would be uh, the pv would be 1 million multiply by 0.751 that is 751000 so instead of recognizing revenue 1 million we will recognize the value of revenue at 751000 so as a result the account receivable debit 751000 and sales credit 7 lakh 51000 is the initial entry and then each year we have to increase the value due to financing and that is the 10% of 7 lakh 51000 that is 75100 and that is account receivable debit 75100 which is 10% and the financing component is to be shown in profit and loss account as finance income that is interest income so as a result at the end of the 3 year our receivable value would be 1 million another important aspect is consideration payable to a customer sometime it it's possible that we have to pay something we have to pay against we have to pay to customer against the goods and services and sometimes we we do not pay anything against goods and services rather we are paying something to a customer for example we have committed a sale transaction with a customer and we have uh, promised to pay an amount to a customer then we have to see that uh, on what ground we are paying this if we are paying the, this payment to a customer against goods and services then there will be a different scenario and if you are paying against not against goods and services there will be a different scenario so if the payment is against goods and services to a customer then it is simply a purchase transaction like we are purchasing something from a supplier but if it is not against goods and services and whatever is the consideration that we are receiving from the sale transaction we will deduct the payment from that transaction price for example if our original transaction is 1 million and we'll pay 100000 to customer that means the transaction price is not 1 million it is 900000 and we have to book revenue on the basis of 900000 now in the fourth step that is after identification the performance obligation and the transaction price now let's assume that there are more than uh, perf uh, multiple performance obligation in that case the step number 4 says that allocate the transaction price to different performance obligation so in case of multiple performance obligation allocate the transaction price in proportion to stand alone selling price sometimes this is stand alone selling price is easily available and sometime it is not available if this is the case then if not directly observable then we have to estimate the stand alone selling price 
and there are there are many methods available for that one of the method is use the adjusted market assessment approach another method is the expected cost plus a margin approach identify the cost and then see what is your markup or margin and then calculate the price that that is the stand alone price for example a car manufacturing company is selling a car plus also selling a service after sale services but the stand alone price of after sale service is not available if you cannot get it from the market assessment approach the ideal way is identify how much cost is to be incurred on this servicing contract and then add a particular markup and then identify the selling price now if there is any element of discount in that so we have to allocate this discount between each component in a transaction i'll cover uh, the allocation of transaction price plus discount in this example for example company sell a product with one year free services so it's a product for example it's a car with one year free service at a price of 200000 this is the price normally if you sell the single product the price is 190000 but you do not sell services separately it's a part of that 200000 now this is not the case that the product price is 1 like 90000 and the services price is 10000 right we have to identify it uh, separately so the contract price transaction price is 200000 rather than 1 like 90000 and in 200000 the seller is providing a product plus the one year free service the other support service attract a markup of 50% and expected service cost is 40000 so we know that the expected service cost is 40000 and markup is 50% so now how to allocate the transaction price so this is the way we can allocate the transaction price so first of all identify the estimated cost use the markup and then identify the price so i have applied 50% markup so the price of servicing if you provide it separately then the price of services is 60000 now i am giving you a product plus service in 200000 but the price of the service is 60000 now if i sell the product separately plus services it would cost you 190000 for the product 60000 for the services that is the total price 250000 but i am giving you this whole in just 200000 it means what it means you are getting a discount of 50000 of buying product and getting services as a bundle as a bundle so this is the 50000 discount now now if 50000 is the discount then we have to allocate this discount to both the product cost as well as the service cost so first of all what we have to do is to identify the element of discount the price total price with respect to total price so the discount of total price is 20% now allocate this to product cost product cost is 190000 if selling it uh, separately and now we'll get 80% so the value of the product is 152000 similarly services is 60000 but we are selling as a part 80% value 48000 combined together we have received or will receivable will create a receivable of 200000 now the 200000 is a total price of the product as well as one year service so against the product we will recognize a revenue of 152000 and against the services which is a free service but that is not free uh, it is against it it has a price and that is a 48000 over one years time but product is to be recognized separately and services is to be recognized separately now the last thing that is the recognition of revenue step number 5 so after identification of contract performance obligation transaction price allocation now when revenue is to be recognized the revenue is to be recognized when entity satisfies the performance obligation 
what is your promise by transferring goods or services for example if i am selling you a car and the de delivery of the car will be after 6 month then at the time of delivery of the car the revenue would be recognized if i am providing you a service then it depends then on what basis services is to be recognized performance obligation can be satisfied over time and at point in time so most of the in the case of goods there is a point in time transaction in case of services there is so uh, the performance obligation is satisfied over a period of time sometimes at point in time as well now if we talk about point in time then we have to identify the point in time at which customer obtain the control of that particular goods or services so revenue recognition in terms of point in time transaction depends on when customer obtain the control now how we can identify that a particular goods or services against which the customer has got the control because if the customer has got the control then it means we have the right to recognize revenue control of an asset refers to the ability to direct the use of and obtain substantially all of the remaining benefits from the assets control includes the ability to prevent others from obtaining benefits from an asset so if the sale transaction has been done and i'm i i have received something from the seller and i have the ability to direct the use of getting the benefit that means i have the control the following are indicators of the transfer of control so following point refers to that uh, uh, if you can see that uh, in any transaction that if uh, any point is satisfied then you can see that the control has been transferred and the seller has the right to recognize revenue for example the entity has a present right to payment for the asset the customer has legal title to the asset the entity has transferred physical possession of the asset the customer has the significant risk and reward of ownership of the asset and the customer has accepted the assets so these are the indicators uh, any single point can indicate that the customer has got the control and the seller has the right to recognize revenue in the next video i'll be uh discussing different points of transfer of control and then few examples to complete this ifrs